Okay, in this section of the course we're going to learn a little bit about polynomials. And um, polynomials are central to all kinds of math and algebra and such. So first thing we're going to do is learn what is, what is a polynomial and look at a few examples. Um, let's take something like 3z squared. Okay, what is that? Uh, the choices here is going to be monomial. binomial or trinomial and that's what we're gonna these are the three things we can choose from um, mono means one bi means two and tri means three so it's fairly obvious this is a monomial okay the reason it's a monomial is because there's one term basically polynomial is poly meaning poly means um, more than one and nomial just I suppose means term I don't know I have to look it up but um, polynomial means many terms basically terms involve, involving variables this particular type of polynomial these are all polynomials here um, but this type of polynomial this this one here is a monomial because it only contains one term the 3z to the second power okay um, as an alternative if I had something like 3x plus 7 would that be a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? That would be a binomial. Why? Because it has two terms. Now notice there is no x here out next to the 7. Um, but if you think about it, there kind of is. Because if you put an x here to the 0 power, that would mean that there's really a term involving x to the first power and a, ter a term involving x to the 0 power. Because remember, anything raised to the 0 power is simply 1. So bottom line is this is a binomial because in general it has two terms involving x. It just so happens one of the terms x is kind of kind of disappears because it's x to the zero power. So that's a binomial. Uh, another example would be s squared minus 23s plus 31. Is this a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial? Well you guessed it, it's a trinomial. Um, it's a trinomial and the reason is because it contains three terms in s you have an s to the second power term an s to the first power term and then an imaginary sort of uh, invisible s to the zero power term over there because anything to the zero power is one and that kind of drops out so that's the basics of of what is a polynomial all of those examples that we just wrote down there they are all um, they're all polynomials uh, and we just give you know special names to certain kinds of polynomials um, just sort of, sort of to keep the language straight um, so that's a lesson in classification that really didn't involve any math um, now next let's look at some polynomials and um, and talk about something called the degree here's a monomial 3x to the fourth and you'll be asked on some test or some quiz or something what is the degree of this polynomial the bottom line is the degree is the is the number associated the highest largest number that is an exponent in any of the terms so in this case the degree is four this is a fourth degree polynomial because which is a monomial because um, the highest power of x is four so this is fourth degree um, let's take another example uh, minus 2x squared plus 3x to the third what is the degree of that polynomial notice this is also a binomial because I have two terms one involving x squared one involving x, x to the third what is the degree of this again the degree is the highest numbered exponent which is 3 because 3 is the largest exponent here so this is a third degree polynomial um, let's take a, a different looking example. What if you have something weird like 3x squared y to the third plus 5x to the 3y to the fifth? What would be the degree here? Well here I have a mixture of x and y so what you do is you just add up the different exponents for each term. Here the sum of these exponents is 5 and here the sum of these exponents is 8 and you just pick the bigger number so this is an eighth degree polynomial okay now we're going to go and continue with polynomials and we're going to talk about functional notation 
Um, this is going to look a little bit different, but in the end, you'll see that it's no different than anything we've been working on. What if I gave you something like 5x minus 3? That's just a term. And I said, what, what, is the, what is the value of this expression when x is equal to 1? Well, how would you solve this? Well, all you would do is you'd plug 1 in here, which would be 5 times 1 minus 3. 5 times 1 is 5 minus 3 is 2. That would be the answer to the problem. We've, we've been doing this kind of thing really since the start of the course. I'm going to show you a different way to write this that you're going to see very frequently. It's called function. Um, I'm going to define a function. And this function is going to be called p. p, which is a function, is a function of a variable called x, because x is the variable that can change. And this function, p, is just going to be equal to 5x minus 3. So I've, I've ascribed uh, this function, p, the value of this expression here on the right, which is simply 5 times x minus 3. I put x in parentheses to signify that p is dependent upon x. In other words, the only thing that will make this on the right-hand side actually change is different values of x. So I put it in parentheses. This uh, is called it's called a function, really. Um, so knowing that, basically the way it works is anything I drop into the left-hand side, you just plug it into the right-hand side, and that, that's the answer. So what if I have p of 2? What this really means is that I'm evaluating p at x equals 2, which is the same thing as sort of what we were doing up there, which is simply equal to 5. x is 2, so 5 times 2 minus 3. And 5 times 2 is 10, minus 3 is 7. So p of 2 is equal to 7. Okay. Um, you know, we can do several more. Let's say we have p of negative 1. Um, again, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm plugging negative 1 into the right-hand side of, of what p is. So I'm left with 5 times negative 1 minus 3 which is simply 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 minus 3 and negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 so p of minus 1 is equal to negative 8 so you see it's just a shorthand way of writing what we've done in the beginning of the course up here is, is signifying what to plug in I'm just going to define a function I'm going to drop my variable x into the left and, I, and then I'm going to plug it in on the right and that's going to be the answer um, now, how would you do something like, uh, if your function here, again, is, is, is up here, p of x is equal to 5x minus 3, what would you do if I said, well, okay, smarty pants, what is p of w? Well, this isn't even a number. How do I do that? Well, it's the same thing. All I'm going to do is, everywhere where I see an x, I'm going to put a w. That's going to be 5w minus 3. And, and this looks kind of silly. You know, they look exactly the same. The only difference is the variable I've put here. And, and that's exactly right. I'm just showing you a diff different, you know, different kinds of problems, so that uh, you know, on a test or on a quiz or on a SAT or on some sort of test or something, um, it, it won't look so foreign. It won't look so foreign to you. So things aren't really that bad once we get into them. Let's take a different function, q. I'm going to call this one q. I could name the function um, vehicle if I wanted to, or I could I could name the function astrodome. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label this function q. q is a function of z. Um, z is our variable, and that's going to be equal to negative z squared minus 4. Okay? Um, and again, z is simply a shorthand way of, of writing a dependence of, basically, of writing a, a little expression here. It's a short, shorthand way of, of um, defining what z is dependent on. So what if I had something on what q is dependent on rather? What if I had q of 0? Well all I do is everywhere I see a z I put a 0. That's going to equal negative 0 squared minus 4. 0 to the, to the anything power which is basically in this case 0 times 0 is simply 0. So this term goes to 0 minus 4, I've got 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. So q of 0 is negative 4. What if I had q of negative 1? That's going to simply equal negative, negative 1 squared minus 4. 
I kept the negative because that was there. In place of z, I put negative 1 squared minus 4. This is simply going to equal, we'll take it one step at a time. I'll keep the negative here. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So in the parentheses here, I'm just going to have a, a 1 minus 4. So negative 1 minus 4 from our other lesson is negative 5. So q of minus 1 is equal to negative 5. And then finally, what if I had q of 3s, uh, where s is some variable? Well, everywhere where I see a z, I'm going to put 3s. So I'm going to have this leading negative here, 3s, all squared, minus 4. All I've done is plug it in up in the top. Um, and, and what's that going to be? Well, I'm going to square the, the, in the term inside the parentheses here, so I'm going to have a negative um, 3 squared times s squared minus 4. Because remember, whenever you have um, some term in parentheses raised to a power, you basically raise the individual terms inside, the individual um, things inside here by, by the same power, and you just multiply them together. So I kept my negative, and I squared everything inside. 3 times 3 is 9, so now I'm going to remove the parentheses and say negative 9 s squared, can't do much more with that, minus 4. And that is the, that is the value of q of s, of, of 3s here. Um, what does this mean, q of 3s? It's an algebraic expression. It doesn't really mean anything. I just, I'm proving to you that you can plug 3s in here and get a value. Um, this, this looks really abstract, and, and it's like, oh, who cares? But eventually, what we're going to do is we're going to start graphing functions um, in, in the next few sections. We're going to actually take functions, and we're going to learn how to actually plot them on, on a piece of graph paper or in a calculator or a computer or whatever. And um, you'll be able to, to really understand why we're taking the time to write functions in the first place. Let's just take another couple of examples. What if I have a function called r? and it's a function of, of the variable y, and that's going to be equal to y squared minus 2y plus 3. Okay, and this is a polynomial again. The section is, is called polynomial, so all the uh, examples that we're going to do here are going to be polynomials. Um, what if I have r of 0? In other words, what happens to this thing whenever y is equal to 0? Well, I'm going to have 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 3. Well, this is going to go away because this is going to go to 0. 0 squared is 0. 2 times 0 is simply 0. So the answer here, the only thing left is 3. And that's, that is the value r of 0. Now, what if r, what if we have r of minus 2? So I'm going to plug in y is equal to minus 2. I would have minus 2 squared minus 2 times minus 2 up here plus 3. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 from our previous lessons. And then negative 2 times negative 2 again is positive 4 here. And then I have 3 at the end. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So r of minus 2 is simply equal to 11. Okay. Now let's look at one final. Let's say I have r of negative b. What's that going to equal? Well, I have y squared up here, so I'm going to have negative b squared minus 2. I'm going to plug in negative b here plus 3. Okay? And so then negative b times negative b is simply equal to positive b. Again, negative 2 times negative b is positive 2b, because negative times negative is positive, plus 3. And I forgot one thing here as I, as I 